Beginning with this year's elections, voting gets a whole lot easier. Your mailbox is your ballot box. Your ballot packet comes to you in the mail. But only if you're a registered voter. If you need to register or update your address, do it today at elections.hawaii.gov. Look for your free Hawaii elections guide in the newspaper or at these locations statewide. The deadline to register for the general election is October 5th, so don't delay. Hawaii, Hawaii votes by mail. Well, aloha and happy Monday. Welcome to another edition of Spotlight Hawaii. I'm Ryan Kalei Suji, joined by Yanji Denise. We are here, of course, on the platforms of the Honolulu Star Advertiser, a conversation that is brought to you by the Office of Elections. As you saw there, uh, the primary election may be over, but there is still time for those who have not yet registered to register for the general election in what will be, no doubt, uh, another exciting election with many races to be determined. Uh, today, of course, we continue to shed the spotlight on some of the things that are impacting our community. COVID continues to be one of them, Yanji, as we continue on in this conversation of how it's not only affecting lives, but also businesses. That's right. We wanted to focus this month on the economy and so much of what is happening with the coronavirus, of course, is intersecting with the economy. And to bring us her expertise and talk about the hundreds of thousands of uh, employees that have been affected this morning is Sherry Menor McNamara. She's the president and CEO of the Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii. She's served in that role since 2013. So she brings a lot of knowledge and expertise. We're so happy to have you on with us this morning. How is everything uh, this morning? And tell us a little bit about the outlook for Hawaii business to start. Yeah, well, thank you, Ryan and Yunji, for having me on the show. Uh, you know, I wish I could paint a better picture, but fortunately, uh, the outlook looks pretty grim. Uh, just recently, uh, results from a second Uhiro Chamber survey uh, came out, and it showed that 183% uh, jump. Back in April, when we surveyed the uh, members, do you think you'll survive COVID? 6% uh, said they will not be able to. That number jumped to 17%. So again, that goes to 183% jump. Uh, and the further we delay the reopening of tourism, the more significant the impact will be. Uh, you know, what are you hearing directly from businesses? Because the Chamber's role is really to support some of these businesses and some of these employers and employees. So uh, you kind of hear firsthand from these businesses and provide that support. What are they telling you? Yeah, a few things. Uh, obviously, immediate relief. Uh, we've been advocating for immediate assistance by the uh, government since March. Uh, you know, the federal PPP program has gone only so far, and many of those monies have run out or have been running out. In fact, uh, the first in line was all the monies had to be expended at the end of June. That was pushed back. However, by the time Congress came out with that new deadline, all the monies, many of the monies that businesses borrowed uh, have been expended. Uh, on top of that, the federal unemployment plus up of $600 expired at the end of July. The PPP program application deadline expired on August 8th. And the Senate went into recess so you just can imagine the month of August, probably September too, will be a defining moment for many small businesses, especially our local ones. And to that end, of course, we like to bring in the audience. Um, Liana Nolan uh, Kekava says, all my favorite places are closing down. I wonder um, how many of the temporary shutdowns that we've seen, how many do you expect to actually become permanent? Well, based on the hero survey, uh, we expect more to come permanent. And it's very telling, and it goes to show how far our tourism dollar is. Uh, back in August, when we surveyed, excuse me, April, when we surveyed our members and indicated if tourism reopens in August first, the impact would have been probably at about 32% that would have either had to shut down or cut positions. Uh, moving it back to October, it jumps to 60%. So you can see how impacted, uh, how uh, the delay in reopening tourism has an impact on our local economy. Uh, you know, right now we're seeing many of, like our viewer just said, the local restaurants, um, local retail shops, um, you know, local events companies, they're really hurting. But again, every time we push that delay, it will, we will continue to see another wave of businesses shutting down. And we really don't want that because once our local businesses, whether it's Mikilike, which already shut down, um, 
uh, real gastro pub in Kakaako shut down. It's going to change the landscape and fabric of the communities. And we're talking about restaurants that we grew up with. These are institutions uh, where we had graduation parties or birthday celebrations and spent time with families. So you know, we really don't want that to happen. And so that's why, again, we've been urgently asking for some type of immediate relief so that businesses can sustain their operations and make these jobs available. You know, it, it's we certainly hear about those who want us to continue to reopen, uh, but we could be actually heading in the opposite direction with these continuing triple digit case numbers that continue to come up each and every day. Uh, we are hearing that there could be potentially another lockdown of some sort, a stay at home order announced this week. If that does come to fruition and happen and is announced by the governor or mayor, uh, how much more damaging and how much more difficult is that going to be for these businesses who are just trying to hang on right now and looking to have to shut down yet again? You mentioned hanging on, and that is what they're doing, barely hanging on. Many of them are in their last lifeline. You know, even when the Kamaina economy opened up, it was still uh, a loss for many businesses, but at least they were able to open. Another shutdown will guarantee push some of these businesses out of businesses and close their doors permanently. Uh, you know, and that's why we were consistently advocating for clear and concise guidelines in terms of, okay, if we get these many cases, what do businesses need to do to be prepared? But we haven't seen that. And secondly, you know, we hear about wearing masks. Uh, and I think many of us have taken it lightly, but it goes to show that when we don't practice the health and safety protocols, that directly impacts our economy, that directly impacts the jobs that will be pushed away because of this, and that will directly impact our families. And so that's why we need to be extra, extra uh, attentive to these protocols so that we can move our economy and rebuild our economy together. And the sooner we do it, the better it is for the longer term. You know, you mentioned restaurants and retail and event companies. I wonder, is there a specific sector of business um, that is most vulnerable right now with these shutdowns? Who have you seen closing their doors more than others? Yes. Yeah, so when we uh, did a, the first survey with the hero, it was accommodations followed by events and uh, uh, restaurants followed by retail. And so it's been consistent again when we did the second round of survey. Uh, in August, and the results just came out on Friday. Uh, so it's a consistent showing of who's being impacted the most. But again, if we continue to push back the reopening or we experience another shutdown, then it's going to go beyond those industries. We're going to see a lot more industries impacted because of the supply chain. You know, the legislature recently reconvened, and there was a lot of measures and things that were put in place. Uh, the governor uh, has vetoed some of that and has provided his explanations on that. Uh, what do you think the legislature or the state should do to be able to help some of these businesses? Is there anything specific that you folks were advocating for? And, and what are some of the things and measures that you think will maybe help in this time for these businesses? Yeah, so the top three that we've heard were one, a suspension of GE taxes, uh, two, rent relief, uh, three, additional types of grants or loans. The city and county of Honolulu, because they received CARES funding, uh, they established a relief grant program. So it did help certain types of businesses, those that had storefronts, those who met the uh, uh, revenue requirement. And so it did help a little bit, but it's not going to just take one type of relief measure. It's going to be take all kinds of efforts. So cumulatively, we can help keep these businesses stay open. Uh, but it's been challenging because Obviously, the state and the counties have their own challenges with the budget. Uh, so it's not that easy to just nearly, okay, we're going to suspend GET taxes. But we need to find creative, innovative ways so, to ensure that we can find this type of relief, whether it's uh, being more flexible with regulations or uh, expedited permitting process. Uh, it's going to take all kinds of efforts to mitigate this huge impact that COVID has been having on the business community. Um, Zilstra has a question. It's the latest question here on the bottom. What's on the horizon as far as bringing in monies to, into our economy? Obviously, tourism is our main source of revenue to our state. 
What other industries can we move toward in order to, in order to help retain our small local businesses? You know, we've heard so much over the years about diversifying yes. our economy. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, as Ryan and you both mentioned, it's, it's a matter of hanging on. Is there, mm -hmm. you know, to answer his question, what is on the horizon? Is there another revenue source that we can look to other than those tourism dollars? Or is that really all we've got? Yeah, thank you for that question. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tourism industry will continue to remain number one, but obviously this expedites the discussions uh, to focus on economic diversification. The problem is it's not going to be overnight where we can raise revenues through different industries. It's going to take a while. Uh, in the meantime, though, I will say uh, we just launched the HawaiiIsHiring.com website. It's a one-stop center that brings existing resources together uh, for job seekers to find jobs that are currently available. So while it's not nearly as uh, many as those who have already lost their jobs, there are job openings available. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, there are already about 14,000 job postings just in the past uh, week uh, that were posted. Uh, so, and those jobs are in the uh, uh, natural environment, it's in health, construction, uh, engineering. Uh, it's a broad spectrum of industries and different types of jobs from clerks to managerial positions. And what's uh, great about this is that those who have been in the hospitality industry and will likely not get their job restored, it provides them an opportunity to pivot to a different industry because it does provide training resources on the website so that they can get trained while earning a wage. Uh, and so again, that is hawaiishiring.com that you mentioned there. Is that correct? That's uh, the website? The S, Hawaii is hiring. Hawaii oh, is hiring. Yes. Okay, got it's it. It's easy to navigate website. And and what about for employers that may be, is that something where employers who may be looking for employees are, you know, is that a, a resource for them? Can they also provide information on that site as well? Yes. So when we launched it, we immediately got emails from different employers and said, I have some jobs available. How can I post it? So we use different platforms from Indeed.com and HireNet.com because we didn't want to create another job portal when there's already existing resources. So what we did was just pull all those resources together and put them on one website. So it's whether it's those who are unemployed, those who want to switch careers, or even those that just graduated from high school or college, uh, there will be jobs available for any category. Uh, and you can search by island as well. Um, Rory Rankin has a has a statement here. She, he says, uh, small historic mom and pops will be forever closed and never reopen. I will never be able to relive my Hanabata days and peace of aloha. I think more than ever, can you talk a little bit about why buying local right now? You know, we all have limited funds given the stress of COVID, but um, why buying local matters? Why buying local matters? Because we wanna keep the money here uh, rather than go outside so to the extent possible yes we've been communicating to our businesses who currently do outsource their um, services or uh, buying their services from abroad to bring them back here uh, for us to buy local because we are then supporting each other in that way and that's why uh, you know you hear it buy local all the time is to help support the Kamayan economy which is so critical right now as we uh, navigate this path forward for our state. You know, the other question that often comes up, uh, and, and I know that, you know, you've probably heard it from many of the people that you've been in contact with, is just the unemployment benefits and getting extended and being able to provide that support. We know that there's been a backlog and they continue to struggle uh, with that. Uh, has the chamber been involved in any sort of the conversations to advocate for more resources or, you know, voicing those concerns? to you know the government because it seems like there's a lot of people that are still waiting for these unemployment benefits uh yes we did we did because we hear from employers too and they're wanting to help their employees uh, they get they've gotten feedback from their employees of how, how long it's been taking to get unemployment benefits so we did communicate our concern and offer help as to how we can um, alleviate uh, the, the the challenges right now that the UI system is facing, uh, whether it's connecting some of the employers that can directly give the contact information and uh, of their former employee uh, who have been laid off or furloughed um, to the UI uh, department, um, just to expedite the process because there are some challenges with the UI um, 
uh, situation too, where sometimes there's misinformation or there's not complete information. So we help connect some of the employers directly with the UI system. But yes, definitely we need to do more because as more uh, people are unemployed and they don't get those benefits, uh, that's less money going into our economy and then less money to help support the families as well. Mm -hmm. You know, Josh Green was on this program and he said that for every month that the Hawaii economy is shut down, uh, that's mm -hmm. another six months of recovery lead time. In your conversations with the folks at UHERO, how long is the projection for us to actually get out of this circumstance? I mean, we're still very much in it, so it's hard to think about how we get out, but, but looking, looking ahead, um, what are the projections in that regard? Yeah, it's, it's certainly going to be a long road ahead. Uh, Yuhiro expects that it will take until 2029 to get back to pre-pandemic levels. And so that's, it's a long time. And that's why it's even more um, important to have these discussions about economic diversification and to do our part in ensuring that our economy can get back on track uh, and then we are able to reopen tourism so that we can start getting dollars stimulated into the economy again faster than, um, than um, sooner than later. You know, I want to head back into the unemployment question because one of the things that we had heard was that some employers were saying that it was becoming difficult for them to find employees to hire because some of those who had qualified for these unemployment benefits with the $600 plus up, in addition to what they were getting with their UI claims, they were making more money than they maybe would have been making in, in a normal search, uh, circumstance. So a lot of people enjoy the fact that they could just collect this money. Uh, have you heard that concern? And do you expect, I mean, obviously that $600 now has ended, but have you heard those types of concerns from employers as well? We have, uh, we have. And especially when uh, the um, economy opened up again, the common economy opened up, uh, that it, it was hard to bring uh, uh, the employees back. Uh, but first of all, if the employer did offer the job to employee and employee turned down, technically they are not supposed to have continued in unemployment insurance funds. Uh, so that's more of a legality and policy issue. But we hope that many employees, you know, back then would consider that, um, you know, by not having this full-time job, what happens to health benefits and et cetera? And what if they want to go back to a job um, offered to them um, after the $600 expire, then the benefits go away for what the employer provided. But we can certainly understand, right? $600 is a lot of money. And for families to be able to uh, buy food and to um, spend the economy is also critical as well. So we hope when Congress does come out with some kind of agreement uh, that it is a balance between the employer um, having employees come back to work, but as well as being able to support families that are really in need of the funding. To try to get tourism back on its feet, we've heard a lot of talk in recent days about these travel bubbles. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, we're trying to get tourists sort of any way we can and do it safely. Is that something that sounds reasonable to your members from what you've heard? Yes, uh, definitely reasonable. Unfortunately now though, the Initially, we wanted to uh, promote Hawaii as the safest place on Earth. And with the increasing exponential cases, that's something that we cannot advocate at this moment. But we hope that we can continue discussions, for example, with Japan, to form a travel bubble because we are uh, uh, we do have that relationship. Uh, you know, they their their uh, they safety and health uh, protocols are. Um, important as well as ours. So we hope that there can be, we can start the economy going by opening um, these travel bubbles, but we have to first ensure that we can keep, bring the, our cases back down to a um, flattened level. You know, we know that you work also closely with uh, our congressional delegation, uh, Hawaii on the Hill has been uh, an event that uh, really helps to promote Hawaii products outside uh, of the islands. Uh, what has been your conversations maybe with the congressional delegation, uh, if at all, and, and some of the things that are happening on that level? And is there any way to help promote uh, Hawaii and its products uh, on those stages, similar to what you folks used to do with those types of events? Yeah, I know it's very devastating. You know, Ryan, we had Hawaii on the Hill uh, every June. We we're about to enter our seventh year. Uh, and it's grown exponentially from having only 500 people attended to more than 2,500 attended, making it the biggest event on Capitol Hill. 
and it was an opportunity to showcase Hawaii um, to our congressional leaders and keep Hawaii on the forefront, right? Yeah. Uh, it was great. You had Made in Hawaii products and we got to uh, promote our local industries and our economy. Uh, so when this happened, you know, it's definitely uh, took a toll on um, that aspect and the purpose of Hawaii on the Hill. So we've been staying in touch uh, with some of the congressional delegation members to, ins to ensure that we can keep that tie um, and find ways to promote Made in Hawaii products. Uh, and that's how we've been working closely with the Hawaii Tech Development Corp because they are the manufacturing arm through the Innovate Hawaii to find different ways to promote Hawaii products. Uh, from a chamber standpoint, we launched 1808.com.org, excuse me, website. And it was meant to uh, help local businesses that otherwise would not have an e-commerce site uh, to post their um, uh, products or services uh, for as a service for free. Uh, and also to post stories about local um, restaurants or local retail shops um, and provide hope that we need to work together and collaboratively to bring Hawaii back to where it was. Um, you know, I think many, there's many, challenge, many challenges across the nation, right? Every state is facing their challenges. So uh, whatever means we can find, whether it's through our channels, whether it's congressional delegation, uh, we'll, we're going to do everything we can to help promote the Made in Hawaii product. But it's nothing like being in person and experiencing um, the products themselves. I know you hear from um, so many of your members. Who do you think, or is there a business that you can hold up, um, not necessarily by name, but perhaps by industry or example, that is doing this well, that has been able to pivot and, and has been able to sustain given all these challenges? You know, what are some steps that you think are in the right direction? Yeah, I, this situation has definitely forced many businesses to think outside the box to think more creative and be more adaptable and flexible. So I'm sure uh, you, many of uh, your viewers have also witnessed this too. Many restaurants have started to package family meals for takeout or even sell grocery products. Um, some retails have been able to quickly pivot to uh, e-commerce. And so that why, that's why the uh, revenue loss wasn't as significant. Uh, and also some industries that are just uh, finding different ways to use their existing products and services. I think we've heard it before, some of the manufacturing companies pivoting from making rum to now PPEs. Uh, so it just forces us to think creatively, but um, in the end, you know, majority of businesses are uh, being impacted to varying degrees and levels. You know, as our time kind of comes to an end here, do you have any sort of final thoughts on, um, you know, just the, the chamber stance and, and some things that you will continue to be advocating for uh, going forward in, into this time where there's a lot of still uncertainty for many businesses, but uh, maybe sort of a, a, a closing message that you maybe have for, for those out there? Yeah, thank you for that question. You know, I think we all have that responsibility and we all can do our part to save our economy, to save our local jobs uh, and bring our economy back to where it was and build it to, into a stronger and more resilient one. And the most simple way we can do that, and I know we've been hearing it from many people, wear your mask, practice physical distancing, because we do need to flatten the curve. Because if not, uh, we will continue on this path that it's going to be much harder to rebuild our economy. So please, please, please uh, practice the health and safety protocol to save our economy. Number two for businesses, Please do your part in following and implementing the health and safety protocols. Uh, and three, um, for government, please continue to find ways and the solutions uh, to support our local business community because we really don't want to change the fabric and livelihood of our communities. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your message today. And one more time, let's get that website for those who are watching who are perhaps looking for a job. Sure. It's hawaiiishiring.com. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Sherry Manor McNamara from Hawaii's Chamber of Commerce for joining us this morning. We do appreciate your time. Thank you. Aloha. Wow. So amazing to hear from her that projection 2029 for full mm -hmm. recovery. Um, you know, we've heard that it would take years, but Ryan, that's nearly a decade from now. 
Yeah, and I mean, it's it's a sobering number. And of course, uh, that is where we stand right now. And, you know, as we talk about these rising case numbers and the fact that we could potentially see a Ryan's frozen on my end. I'm not sure if he's frozen on your end. So I'm, oh, there we go. <laughs> I hear you and I see you continue. Yeah. So it's just, you know, with the, with a pending shutdown, it could potentially add to more time in the recovery phase. Absolutely. And, um, you know, what she said there is so important. We, we hear it all the time, but buying local, especially right now, really, really does make a difference. So um, it might cost a few dollars more or it might be a little bit, you know, you, you drive a little bit further to get to whatever sh shop you need to get to. But um, where you spend your money now will impact what your community looks like, uh, perhaps for the next decade. Yeah. So, so important that we do all we can to support. And I think we're having some connectivity issues this morning. So as Nicole Whip has noted, we are a little bit frozen, uh, but I'm still here. <laughs> and uh, I think Ryan is refreshing his computer right there. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for those of you who have participated in the discussion this morning. We so appreciate you. On Wednesday, we're going to be joined by UH President David Lassner. He's going to be talking about what uh, changes are coming to the UH system and uh, how they are handling all of this. Of course, there's big changes just to athletics, but what happens to students who are coming in from out of state? Uh, we're going to be talking to him about all of that. And also there are some opportunities uh, for people to enroll in the university and perhaps pursue higher education if it's something that you've been putting off and perhaps 2020 is the year to do that. So we are looking forward to having our conversation with David Lassner. That is happening, as I said, on Wednesday. That's right. And then we look forward to speaking with Governor Ige. Oh, excuse me. We're going to be speaking to Governor Ige at the end of the month. Uh, and next week, we'll be speaking to uh, Mike McCartney from, uh, you know, the uh, Office of Economic Development. And then we'll also be talking to Peter Ingram from Hawaiian Airlines to get a take on how, what they're going through as well. So uh, a lot more exciting guests, uh, a lot more information to come. And again, we want to encourage all of you to uh, register to vote. We thank you for the Office of Elections for allowing us to continue this conversation because, uh, Yanji, another big election coming up in just a few months. That's right. Of course, we are going to be talking about the presidential election, the mayor's race. Um, there are some city council seats that are still open. So it's very important to have your voice heard right now. Of course, people in local government are making all of these decisions. And so um, make sure your voice is heard. Register to vote by October 5th. Go ahead and do that now. Also, very important uh, make yourself be counted. Make sure that you are counted in the census. Uh, the deadlines have been moved up, so uh, there's going to be less time to verify those results. So make sure that you're counted. Hawaii get needs needs all the federal money we can get, and the way we get that is to be counted in the census. So raise your hand for that. My2020census.gov. All right. Until <laughs> Wednesday, we uh, encourage all of you to again continue to stay safe, practice social distancing, wear a mask, and we'll see you right back here on Wednesday with UH President David Lassner. Aloha.